Hi, I'm Dylan Walker here at the LA Chargers practice facility in Costa Mesa, California. Yesterday, I had the opportunity to join a group of 20 amazing young women all striving for the same goal, promoting a positive culture amongst women in sports. Today, we all get to share that same positive message with 22 LA Chargers rookies and get to know who they are off the field. Anna Grant Aussie's journey to Gallagher Ibe Arena is one deserving of attention. She moved over 5,000 miles from her home country of Estonia and followed her heart and her passion here to Eddie Sutton Court in Stillwater. Aussie transferred to OSU after her freshman year where she found a home in Oklahoma and a mentor in Coach Hoyt. Oklahoma State will be one of 16 teams traveling west in July as the Big 12 announced its football media days will be held in Las Vegas, Nevada this year. Taking place at Allegiant Stadium, Big 12 Commissioner Brett Yormark looks to merge entertainment and Big 12 football. What better place to do that than the entertainment capital of the world? J.C. Hoyt closed out her inaugural season with Cowgirl Basketball on a high note, but the schedule they have set for this year will certainly be a challenge. Throughout non-conference play, OSU will face hefty Power 5 competitors. The Cowgirls face top-ranked opponents, including Colorado, who's in top 25, Ohio State, who's in the top 5, Oregon, and Penn State. Hoyt's goal with the non-conference schedule is to give the team ample amount of competition before Big 12 play starts. Um, no doubt about it, we are going to be battle-tested and um, really know what we're made of when we get to conference. With a new season means a new team, and a new team means new specialties. For the Cowgirls, that means a fresh playing style. Last season, the Cowgirls favored an offensive mentality, which led them to the NCAA tournament in a 21-12 record. However, this year, they find themselves to be stronger in the backcourt. Senior forward Lior Garzon served as a dominant offender for the Cowgirls last season. As the second leading scorer, Garzon sank 83 pointers to set the school's single season record and averaged 10.8 points per game. She emphasized how crucial it is to have a good defense in order to promote a strong offense. I think this team is more about like pressure the ball and do a lot of put a lot of focus on the defense side than the offense and we just think like that's going to help our offense to be better and more flowing. So yeah, we definitely focus on the defense side right now. A lot of changes were made to the roster coming into this season. Chandler Prater, junior point guard, left the Jayhawk Nest to ride with the Cowgirls. Last season, Prater was the second highest rebounder for Kansas, having 33 starts and seeing action in 35 games. However, Prater emphasizes how she wants to be a part of a program that promotes camaraderie while also boosting competition. I think about the energy that we bring during practices, how everybody's enjoying themselves during preseason running practices. Like, that's not usual. So I just get a feeling that everyone's going to work hard, we're going to be locked in, and we're going to have a lot of fun. For The Poke Report, I'm Dylan Walker. Hi, everyone. Oklahoma State needs three wins to reach the Women's College World Series final. The Cowgirls facing Tennessee first to see who goes on to play Florida State. Tennessee would take an early lead in the third. Riley West hits this single to left that will score the second run of the inning for the Lady Vols. The woman from Rocky Top also played some defense. The Cowgirls' Talon Edwards drives this ball to the alley for extra bases. Michaela Ward tries to score, but she's thrown out at the plate. The Cowgirls claim interference on the play, but the call stands. Down 3 0 in the sixth, senior Morgan Wynn powers this pitch over the left field wall. That cuts the margin to 3 to 1, but that's all the closer the Cowgirls will get. Taylor Tuck is caught looking for strike three to end the game. OSU season ends with a 47 and 16 record. Over to basketball, the winner of game three in NBA Finals history has gone on to win the series 80% of the time. With the Denver Miami series tied at one win apiece, this game three is just as important. The Denver two-man game got back on track tonight. Jamal Murray feeds Nikola Jokic for the short jumper. Then it's the Joker starting the play that ends with Murray's circus shot from three. Murray and Jokic each record triple doubles and combine for 66 points. Heat trying to stay close, Bam Adebayo with the follow slam for two of his 22 points. But Denver outscores Miami by nine in the third quarter to break it open in the fourth. Former KU star Christian Brown comes up with the steal and the slam. Nuggets up big. Denver's win gives them a 2-1 lead. Game four of the series is Friday. Over to baseball, the Texas Rangers have been one of Major League Baseball's biggest surprises. The Rangers going for number 40 win tonight against the Cardinals 
Under the roof at Globe Life, the Redbirds jump out to an early lead. Nolan Arenado takes it deep and gone. That's Arenado's 11th homer this season. In the third, Nathaniel Lowe hits this pitch towards the bullpen, and it's not coming back. That's Lowe's seventh homer on the season, and it ties the game. Then, in the fourth, Marcus Simeon picks up a couple of RBIs with this double into right center. The Cardinals' defense messes up the relay that allows another Texas run to cross the plate. It's now 5-2 Rangers. Texas holds on for a win. That's 11 victories in the last 13 games for the home team. Despite the Rangers' hot streak, the Astros are staying close in the American League West race. Houston playing at Toronto tonight. The Astros go ahead 1-0 on this Mauricio Dubon leadoff homer off Kevin Gosman, but that's Houston's only run of the night, with Gosman allowing only four hits while striking out 13. In the third, former Astro George Springer hits this big fly over the wall in left center to put the Jays up 2-1. That's Springer's ninth homer this season. Next inning, and it's Toronto's Dalton Varsho going yard, making it 3-1 Blue Jays. Houston starter Hunter Brown gives up three homers, taking the loss. The two teams close out their series tomorrow. And that's sports. We'll be right back.